Welcome to God of Run. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest today is Caitlin Jones. Caitlin has her own show on the Manhattan Neighborhood Network. It's called In the Kitchen with Caitlin. She is also a runner with the Dashing Whippets. So I'm thrilled to have Caitlin on the show. Caitlin, thank you for coming in at the last minute. Oh, thanks for having me. It, I was really excited when you asked. Big fan of the show. And we're on the same network, so that's, that's exciting, right. too. Well, we'll, we'll cover that a little bit later on. Sure. Let's introduce yourself by telling us where were you born, a little bit about your childhood. I was born in Staten Island, New York, and um, about my childhood. Oh, boy. I went to Catholic school all my years in school, and... Um, it was a lot of fun. It uh, there was it wasn't all nuns at that point because, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. So um, but back to growing up and running. Um, I started running when I was like nine years old um, for CYO um, Catholic Youth Organization. So it's the school teams that uh, the Catholic uh -huh. schools league that they would participate in, um, and I ran track up until. Um, sophomore year of high school and I became really involved in the drama club and musicals and performing and the schedules conflicted and the um, actually the glee club professor told me that I needed to pick because track practice was conflicting too much with rehearsal so I had to pick and unfortunately I had to like retire my track shoes there for uh -huh. a while I let's went give, to Nazareth College of Rochester in upstate New York. Well, let's give them a shout out. Yes, shout out to Nazareth. They were great. I loved my time at Nazareth College. And um, part of the reason my, my one of my jobs that I have, my many things that I do, I'm a casting director because of an internship I did while at Nazareth College. So that oh, kind of worked out. But in college, you weren't able to put on your track shoes again? I couldn't put on my track shoes again because the meets were... Um, they traveled a lot for the meets, mm -hmm. and again, it co still conflicted with my performing. Okay. And two years after I graduated college, I moved to Manhattan. And one day I was walking home from work, and someone ran by me, um, like a runner running to the West Side Highway ran by me, and I just got this like whiff of like their sweat, and I was just uh -huh. like, God, I miss that so much. Oh, that's great. It was so random. And I called my one friend who's really big into fitness and running herself. She's run two marathons, my friend Candace. And I was like, would you want to go for a run with me? So I met her the next day at the fountain um, by um, Columbus Circle in Central Park. Mm -hmm. And we would run every day. And I started out running the lower loop. Okay. And it had been a long time since I had ran, and I felt like I wanted to die. Uh -huh. And what <laughs> started out as like barely able to finish 1.7 miles, right. then became running like 10K every day, first thing in the morning. Wow, and 10K, then, six miles. Yeah. And then she was like, maybe you should like do a race, because then we would always race to like the end uh -huh. when we were done with our workout, uh -huh. like, which I later learned was like we were doing strides at the end of a workout. And I was like, oh, wow, you're just, like supposed to do that. OK. <laughs> That's funny. And so I did the pride run, and um, I got hooked. And I was like, wow, that wasn't as awful as I thought. That was actually a lot of fun. Let me sign up for eight more races and a volunteer shift so I can run the marathon next uh, year. <laughs> next year being what year? 2013. So my first marathon was New York 2013, all because I had a really good time at a popsicle at the Pride Race. <laughs> That's right. They do give a popsicle. Oh, my God. It was a really hot day, and I can swear to you to this day, I don't think I ever remember being so excited in all my life to have a popsicle. Oh, absolutely. It was after that race. It was so Everything hot. tastes extra good after a run. Oh, my God. It's like, yeah, it's true. Well, at that point, what, did you join the team yet? Not yet. Um, I started training for the marathon, um, and I did it mostly on my own. And then about six weeks before the marathon, I actually um, went on an online date with a guy who was on a running team. And I was just so excited because, aside from my friend Candace, there was no one in my life who I could talk to about running. <laughs> and every time we would go on dates, all I'd want to talk about was running and like my training and how I did and how that last workout was. I, yeah, you just, needed a support group, obviously. Seriously. <laughs> well, up, up until that point, how I got most of my support for my running was Instagram. 
Huge. There's um, the hashtag Insta Runners and Marathon Training, okay. and a lot of people through that I became friends with, okay. like, and correspond with on Instagram, and some of them I've even met around at races. Yeah, yeah. So it was like this community of people, and we would cheer each other on and like um, post from your Garmin, like pictures of your Garmin or like pictures from your route later, oh, okay. and things like giving each other that encouragement to like chase your goals and you know show your splits and things like that and what's your eat what you're eating and stuff and hashtag fit fam and things like that so that was like a huge means of support for me up until I had people like in real life to talk to about my running <laughs> so I was like oh my gosh someone would want me to run on their team if I was gonna join a team I really really wanted to be on the dashing whippets and he was like the whippets and I go yeah, they have a cheering station at every race, and I kind of always secretly wish that someone on their cheering station would cheer for me, too. <laughs> oh, <very laughs> There's so much team spirit. They do. They have so much team spirit, and that's why I was like, so then I was like, you know what? You're right. I'm going to go join a team. So then I Googled them, and then I found out how to join, and it's just through Meetup, and I just showed up at a practice, and I remember the second practice I showed up with, someone said, oh, where's your friend? And I go, what friend? And they were like, the friend that you came with last week, she didn't come back? And I was like, oh, I had just met that girl that night, and I knew it was a fit. <laughs> <laughs> and they thought the people I was talking to in my face group were already friends with me, and I had just met them. I was like... I think this is a, the place I need to be to do my running. And Great. Now Great. My, that, was, that was just before the marathon? It was six weeks before the marathon, and it was the first time I started doing structured speed work, which for someone who knows what they're talking about with running, like marathon training, like changing up a regimen six weeks before the race is like not a good idea, but I didn't know otherwise, <laughs> so I did it. And now I went from just running like a fart like on a Tuesday to actual real speed work uh -huh. and doing the marathon based workout because I was like, well, I'm running the marathon. I didn't know I should do an intro to speed work. I just went in with everyone else. Okay. And I was going in with the goal of breaking four hours and I ended up doing 351.44. With only on your first marathon. On my first marathon with only six weeks of real speed work. Real so, speed work. So that's like a testament to Scott Batten and his speed work. The dashing whippers <laughs> got you into under the four as you go. That's amazing. Yeah. Especially for first time. Usually it's, mm, people just want to finish. <laughs> but you were more goal oriented. Yeah. Um, I just, well, I knew my... My PR at that point for, um, I had, when I ran the marathon, I had already run 13 half marathons. So That's I knew, and I am one of those people where if I really like something, Will, uh -huh. I really like it and uh -huh. I want to do it all the time. And I had known that I loved running half marathons. So there was a point where I was running like two a month. Interesting. Uh, do you have any uh, particular favorite ones that you recall? The Staten Island half. Really? Why? Oh, because you were born in Staten Island. <laughs> <laughs> also, every time I run the Staten Island half, I PR. Um, I don't know if it's because my family's nearby or if it's because there's that big downhill on mile 12. I never heard anybody claim Staten Island to be a favorite because it's so, uh, there's no trees. I, I think there's well, here's the thing. There's so many other things about Staten Island, but I understand the convenience of having the half there so people can get to it because Staten Island... The, the trains aren't that accessible mm -hmm. like they are at every other borough. Like you have to take the ferry. So to have it too far from the ferry would make a whole nother hurdle for to get people to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some trees once you once you get um, to um, Father Capitano Boulevard, and uh, there's the view of the beach and the water know, and, and the Verrazano Bridge. Well, you know, I think you make a good ambassador. For I don't hear too many people rave about it the way you do. Well, now they have Staten Island Day, so there's a block party uh -huh. at the end of it to um, raise funds for Hurricane Sandy victims. And, you know, I mean, the marathon starts in Staten Island. And That's true. you actually run very close to, like, the on-ramp that you would run on on the marathon day when you if you're on the lower level of the bridge, mm -hmm. like my corral was. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, like, right there. You're becoming well known within the Manhattan Neighborhood yes. Network community mm -hmm. because of your cooking show. Yeah. In the Kitchen with Caitlin. Yes. Well, tell us about how did that start? My dad's a caterer and his dad was a chef. And growing up, I always was helping my dad in the kitchen. So I learned to cook 
at what I learned later is actually a very young age. I then went to college and started cooking for my friends because I was like one of the few people who like knew how to cook in the dorm. <laughs> then they'd come and bring just this, these raw ingredients so I'd have to make it. So they'd sit and chat with me while I'd make the food and then we'd eat. And one day after I moved to Manhattan, my friend did that. Like, like look for old time's sake, brought all the ingredients to my house that she had gotten and asked me to cook her dinner. And we were talking the whole time, like catching up. We hadn't seen each other in a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just like a little light bulb went off and was like, this would be a great idea for a show. So we shot 11 episodes, <laughs> not knowing what we were going to do with them. And then I sent one to M&N. And where, where did he shoot? In my apartment. Oh, that kitchen is your apartment? That's my kitchen. Whoa, I thought, I didn't know M&N had a kitchen. <laughs> they might now, but um, that's, my, that's my apartment. Uh, because again, we didn't know what we were going to do with it. We had, literally, I was paying out of my own pocket for the groceries. My partner happens to own all the equipment. So it was really like shoestring. By the equipment, you mean not the kitchen utensils, but the, uh, the cameras. He has a camera and sound equipment. Our editor, Corey Sivakov, did the graphics, who also edits the show for us. And do you know what kind of software he uses? Final Cut. Oh, great. That's the uh, product that's been that's taught here. Yes. Yeah. Oh, cool. How did you find these, uh, these helpers? The crew, um, I just kind of found them through when I was doing Caitlin Jones Saves a Day. So I went on Mandy.com and met um, Eric Brower, who was the um, director of photography for my web series. And then I was kind of like overwhelmed trying to do it all, like write it, direct it, produce it, and everything at that point. Um, so I asked, so he was like, do you have a person to do this and this and this and this. Uh, and I was like, no. And he goes, don't worry, I have people. Oh, and okay. then he brought people. And one of the people he brought was Joe. And Joe and I hit it off. And then so much so that we decided we wanted to work together. And he became part of my company. And then um, Corey, I, because I work in casting, we cast a lot of reality stuff. Mm -hmm. And when you cast um, reality TV, you take the footage, like a lot of footage from an interview, because it's real people, they're not performing, and you edit it down into what's called like a casting pitch. Mm -hmm. And you present that to the network, and the network will say, yes, we want this person uh -huh. to be on X, Y, or Z show. Okay. Um, so he was a casting editor okay. for us. And we had done a lot of work together to the point where I didn't even have to like give. Once I gave him notes on his first edit, if he had to edit more things like it, mm -hmm. I would rarely have to give him follow up notes mm -hmm. with subsequent mm -hmm. things because he just gets how my brain works. Right, right. And the way I speak and the things that I find are funny or the way I tell jokes mm -hmm. and a lot of editing things that are not scripted is about finding that rhythm. Mm -hmm. And I know how hard it is to find someone who gets it. Right, right, right. Sounds <laughs> like you have more than just wanting to talk about. Now you can talk about your cooking show. Yes, the show. And how did you pick the, uh, the what items to cook and the guests? Um, the guests for season one were really mostly just my friends. <laughs> and I just were like, hey, do you want to be on my show? <laughs> I'll cook for you. And that's really how it worked out. Um, and so far that, that worked. Um, and then picking what to make after I had them say yes, they would be on the show. Um, a lot of times people have their like dietary restrictions or things they don't like to eat. Because mm -hmm. it's really important to me that when they have that moment when they taste the food that it's authentic, that they genuinely like it. So, mm. All right. Bon appetit. I like to choose the food too. I'm down with that. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Mm. You can taste the butter. Or maybe it's the oil. I don't know. It's good. <laughs> mm. Oh, well. You have to make this. <laughs> and then you have to like try really hard not to eat it all in one sitting. Well, thank you. Very cool. Yeah. But you also have, because I've seen your shows a few times, you have a really nice segment called Fuditions. Yes. 
tradition on the street. Yes, yes, and I like it because you go out on the street, and I saw one segment where you did it in the backyard, and I think you interviewed your grandma. Yes, I did. So tell us about that, and uh, how did you come up with the name and the idea, and some of your favorite ones. Thank you. Um, Foodition on the Street is um, a segment, um, and the word I made up, and we trademarked it, and it's a food-based tradition, and we ask people what traditions in their family revolve around food. And it could be anything from your favorite comfort food to a meal that has been passed down for generations or a dish that is commemorative of a certain holiday in your family or your group of friends, you know. And we go to people um, on the street or sometimes in my family's backyard when there's barbecue and ask everyone what their foodditions are. And I, we did the family barbecue ones because it was important to establish foodition for us, since I made up the word, mm -hmm. with my family's foodditions because it's a lot of what influences my cooking. Mm -hmm. So I felt like that was going to be really important. So I really like talking to my grandma, um, talking to my mom is funny because actually, ironically enough, my mom is a terrible cook. She oh, Is she going to be a surprise to hear this? No, no. <laughs> okay. We talk about that in her foodition oh, interview okay. and we okay. laugh about it. Okay. She had this... Um, <laughs> She had this recipe that she would um, use light, fat-free mayonnaise, coat chicken with it, and then roll the chicken in cornflakes and bake it. Wow. Yeah, I know. Cornflakes. We're not going to make that on the show. <laughs> <laughs> that one didn't make TV. Uh, but she does have a few things that she makes well. She has a uh -huh. few like go-to dishes uh -huh. um, that she's very good at that we do make on the show, like the um, broccoli rob with sausage is a recipe my mom made up that actually okay. worked. Okay. Um, so I do give her props, but my dad's really oh, he's the, the chef. culinary. Yes, he's yes, the culinary yes. talent in the family. Well, he, um, he'll be on the show soon, you know, as the guest. Um, Maybe not as the star, yes, he's a little camera shy. Um, we do have some segments we filmed with him that were like kind of a mix of foodish on the street and cooking with my dad uh -huh. that we're going to see if we can incorporate um, once we edit them down into season two. Uh -huh. So we're kind of excited for that. Okay. My dad, yeah, he, he, he didn't want to even be mic'd. He doesn't like being on camera. He's really? like, it's really funny. I get my personality and my loudness uh -huh, uh -huh. from my mother uh -huh. and I get my cooking ability from my dad. Well, you picked the best parts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I am the best qualities of both my parents. And an either one of runner? No. <laughs> so who's the fastest? You're the fastest in the family then? Yeah, my sister's actually on the Whippets too. Oh. And a lot of people think it's funny that I'm a lot faster than her because she's about seven inches taller than me. Wow, she's a giant. <laughs> she's, yeah, she's very tall. And hey, what's her name? Megan Jones. My brother runs too. Um, <laughs> but you're still fastest. I think so. I don't know. My brother hasn't run races or anything like that in a while, so uh -huh. I don't know how fast he would clock in at. So I don't want to just like outright say like I'm definitely the fastest. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good that I might be the fastest, okay. but I don't know where Ryan's at in his training okay. or what he's like. He's oh, running. Okay, just well for maybe you could offer a challenge here. We've been trying to like rope Ryan into joining the Whippets too. My sister and yeah, I. Yeah to no avail. He's the baby of the family? He is. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm the oldest. Oh, okay. My sister's in the middle, and then there's my brother. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I have, I've had other guests that we were younger, and they, they wanted to, you know, prove they were just as good as their uh, elders. Yeah. <laughs> well, Megan flat out said, like, she wants to run the marathon because I ran a marathon. So yep, she yep, yep. just finished her 9 plus 1. She's running the marathon next year for the first time. New York, too? Yeah. Boy, you guys picked tough ones to do. You're right. <laughs> um, I, I'm debating if I want to do that one with her or if I want to cheer her because it was really special. When I ran my very first marathon yeah, yeah. in New York last year, my sister um, made sure she cheered me in all five boroughs. Okay. So, oh, wow. She was able to m manage the so traffic. So there was a big send-off um, from my parents' house because I stayed at their house for Is marathon that, morning. That makes sense. Right. Um, my brother drove me, dropped me off. Um, and then my sister and my dad and my mom drove the car through Jersey and ended up in Brooklyn by Bedford. So like in that Williamsburg area um, through the, um, the Jewish neighborhood uh -huh. part I, of it. I, I see them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, uh, she was there cheering because you know how it gets a little quiet wow. over there. So then she got on the train and <laughs> went into Queens. This sounds like a G. movie. 
cars, trains, yeah. subways. Went on the train <laughs> to, uh, to Queens, um, cheered me in Queens, got on the train again, and um, I don't even know what train she got on, but then she made it to the Bronx. Well, that is dedication. And that, then got back on the train and cheered me um, right before I was going into oh Central Park. Oh, my gosh. My God, that, that's So tremendous. I'm debating, I was like, would it mean more to her if I ran the race with her or if I took on the challenge and tried to race I know, through that's, five uh, boroughs to that's, cheer? That's a different kind of a marathon in itself. That's what I said. She did. The, she, she actually, Brooklyn Running Company had a cheering contest because at one point she was in front of Brooklyn Running Company cheering for me, and they had a contest of who could cheer the loudest, and then she got a free pint glass that has the Brooklyn Running Company she, logo, even, she won. Did she realize she was in the contest, or she just happened to be there? I think she had just happened to be there, and she was <laughs> just going so crazy, win. and they were like, you deserve this. You deserve it. Oh, yeah. So she's, she's a really big fan of mine, and that's awesome. So I think I might... I'm just, like I said, it's still too early to tell. It's a long time well, away. I, I think she'll have a say in that. She may, I don't know. Just, I mean, I'm running, a, way. I'm running a spring marathon, so I guess depending on my time in that spring marathon, oh. it's whether or not I'm going to cheer her or run oh, with okay. her. You don't want to slow her down. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't, see, that's the other thing. If I'm training for a marathon, I don't think I... That's such an ego thing, but I don't think I could actually like run a marathon and be like, I'm just doing this as a fun run. Like if I'm gonna run a race, yeah, like a marathon specifically, like you want to win? <laughs> no, I mean I'm not gonna win, but like P R E R, come oh, on, like okay. I'm gonna do I want to do my sub fours again. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, I wanna. Like I'm gonna. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, we're almost out of time, but before we leave, mm -hmm. because you're, you're basically a chef and a runner, and running involves proper nutrition, mm. what do you do because of your deep knowledge of foods? I do gels. Um, it's because they're, they're easier to carry, to be honest. Like, when you're doing 26.2 miles to carry something that's like gonna weigh you down or hold you back that and also the thing about gels is you can get like 350 calories from a gel and even at best an apple might only be 150 so it's like that's gonna sustain you longer okay. um, that's what works for me um, but also an important thing about not needing as much gel is what you eat the week leading up to the race it's about sensible eating choices that entire week, and also well, just well, give us give us an example. What is your week before the marathon? Is it pastas or is it fish? There's a lot of greens, a lot of kale, a lot of smoothies. Um, there's um, I bake a lot of bread during marathon training. Um, I, I really just love making bread, but I usually do vegetable type breads, like mm -hmm. zucchini breads, pumpkin oh, breads, okay. things like that, to get some um, vitamins in there, but also have more carbs, because mm -hmm. your tank can only hold 2,000 calories at a time, regardless uh -huh. of your size. Uh -huh. So if you have more than that, it's just gonna make you go to the bathroom, it's not gonna fuel your race. Okay. It's okay. just gonna pull energy from the running. Uh -huh. um, so there's that, so it's about getting as much quality into those 2,000 calories as you can whole week mm -hmm. every day and then lots and lots of water that whole week um, but then also making sure when you do water you do electrolytes so like the night before one of my favorite things to have is um, my kale pesto which is an episode of my show that I, I've made it on my show um, so it's pesto sauce but half you instead of doing all basil leaves half of its basil leaves half of its kale so then you get all of the iron from the kale because iron's like so important for especially for women mm -hmm. runners mm -hmm. because you lose it a lot during that time of the month. That's right. Um, so you need to supplement that because your iron gets really really depleted over mm -hmm. distance running anyway. Mm -hmm. Sounds like there's an episode right there. What they eat uh, the week before a marathon. You know, I have one of right. the marathon friends that oh I had eat. plenty of whippets <laughs> on the show already. There's <laughs> People are going to think I exclusively cook for runners, how many runners have been on the show, and then since subsequently have asked to be on the show. <laughs> Finally, I know you want to, well, you haven't decided whether to cheer for your sister run with her for the marathon. Is there any other races that you have on your Yeah, plate? so this, um, this year I'm running um, New York. And I'm also, I'm doing the Staten Island half again. I'm doing the Bronx 10 mile. And then I'm um, I'm gonna do I think it's Ted Corbett in December because that's a points race, 
And I peered at that race last year. So I'm I think that's a t yeah, Dick Corp. That's a famous race. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I it was so funny because I mile PR'd at a 15k. Uh -huh. My mile pace PR for the Roadrunners uh -huh. because I'll, I got really hungry halfway through the race and I ran faster because I wanted the bagel. Uh. <laughs> and then I'm signed up for the Mountains to Beach Marathon in the spring, which is in Ojai, California. It wow. starts on the base of a mountain in California and ends on the Ventura Beach Boardwalk. So it's an 824-foot decrease, decrease in elevation. Okay. How did you find this particular one? I realistically have like planned myself to shave 10 minutes off my marathon time for this year. And then for the spring, I want to shave off 10 more minutes. So I looked for courses to do that because then if I shaved off the 20 minutes total, I'd be uh, Boston qualified. So... Um, by actually like five minutes, so that would be awesome. Okay, so you want to be BQ5 or BQ10? Yeah, I would be a BQ5 um, at that point. So I would, um, that is one, been rated number three as the most Boston qualifiers four years in a row by, I think, marathonsomething.com. Yeah, marathon Guide. Marathonguide.com, yeah. Quite Thank interesting. You. I haven't heard of the particular yeah. marathon. <laughs> Well, listen, thank you for coming at the last minute again. This oh, has thank been you an absolute pleasure. Oh, thank you. This was super fun. I, I enjoy talking about all things running and food, and I could be here all day talking about those, the, my two favorite things. <laughs>